Um, Trick question. No, I, I, don't, I don't think so. Um, Okay. Since Terry did not give us a, uh, a response at that point, we will not rotate around again. And, and, uh, make everybody's eyes roll back in their head behind me here. We have, if, if all candidates agree, we have time for one more question. I would ask to, to get it within the time frame to give you the opportunity to close the statement that we don't rotate through and do the one minute. I'll let everybody answer the question and then rotate one time through for a one minute final response on the question. Is that acceptable to all candidates? Okay, I, I know it'll probably make you a little happier. So Diane will be the first person on this question. Diane or Terry? Oh, I'm sorry, Terry, Terry. I apologize. It's okay. Gabriel. Diane is saying, thank you. <laughs> Despite opposition by county commissioners, the Annapolis delegation recently represented special interest of the FOP to impose collective bargaining with arbitration. Do you believe the state delegates and senators were correct in imposing their will on local officials in this instance, and now that the sheriff's department has collective bargaining with non-binding arbitration, Will you pursue the right to binding arbitration and the same kind of policy for other county employees? Please explain your position in as much detail as two minutes would provide. I can repeat that for everybody. Yes, sir. Okay. Despite opposition by county commissioners, the Annapolis delegation recently represented special interest for the FOP to impose collective bargaining with arbitration. Do you believe state delegates and senators were correct in imposing their will on local officials in this instance and now with the sheriff's department having collective bargaining with non-binding arbitration? Do you, will you pursue the right to binding arbitration in the same kind of policy for other county employees? This past legislative session, a Senate bill with a companion house bill was passed and as Mike said, despite the commissioner's opposition, we now have collective bargaining uh, for our sheriff's deputies. Uh, it does not include binding arbitration, so it's just collective bargaining. It was a very interesting process to watch. I think that we all read about it in the, in the Cecil Wig. We certainly talked about it. Uh, many discussions, many ideas, many very strong feelings about this. Ultimately now, what we have is collective bargaining. And I, with all good faith and honesty, will be at that bargaining table with, and complete that process with integrity. I do not support binding arbitration. Binding arbitration basically takes the control over part of the budget, takes it out of the hands of the commissioners to whom you elected and to whom are accountable to you, and puts it in the hands of somebody who does not live, possibly even live in Cecil County, and certainly is not accountable to you as the voters for those decisions, and I think that's that's wrong. Is this a response or is this? Thank you, Ted. You now have two minutes to answer that question. I will repeat it. <coughs> no, I think I got it. Um, I'm adamantly against this. I think one of uh, well, it's not so convenient. A lot of times when government doesn't like something, they tend to just change the definition of it. We're in a depression. That doesn't sound good. It's when it doesn't sound good to get reelected. So what you do is you change the definition. Now it's a recession. Now it's a downturn. Now it's a bump in the road. And one of the things that's happened in this nation, a lot of we've had unions that start good, and they end up turning bad over years. They end up, they start helping the people that are, you know, the in them, and as they go on, they hurt the people that are new to them, and eventually they overprice things. And the parallels to unions and collective bargaining, and especially binding arbitration, are too close to deny. And I think, in the end, the very people that collective bargaining and binding arbitration are meant to help, it will hurt, it will mean jobs in the long run, it will cost more, and I don't support either. And obviously, I'll have to deal with collective bargaining, but binding arbitration would just be another, you know, be another nail in the coffin. Of this, uh, you know, the, the struggles we're already dealing with with this economic <coughs> crisis. So I, I'm adamantly against both of them, and that's where I stand on it. Okay. 
Thank you, Ted. And Terry. You can reclaim your minute, Harry, if you want. <laughs> Let me share with you a couple of uh, facts and figures that may bring this, this issue close to home. Tonight we've been talking a lot about budgets and, and how to reduce expenditures and ways to increase revenue for, for the county. Uh, the collective bargaining process alone is going to cost us, as Cecil County taxpayers, $50,000 this next fiscal year. Just the process. The town of Elton voted on binding arbitration to, to put it in in 2004. This past spring was the first year that they, they asked for binding arbitration. It cost the town of Elton $283,000. Barry, would you like your minute? Well, part of it. Well, can you take um, Sorry, I, I should have not said that, but thank you. Um, and I just wanted to make a statement on special taxing districts. When I was in office, a lot of communities come to us because they needed projects done, and they asked for that. It wasn't that we put that on them. They came and asked for it. Um, I think one, two, I think it was three different instances. But on the Carter, which we were trying to push everything down on Route 40. Uh, I really don't see a problem with that because you got to entice companies to come here and you got to give a company some sort of a break to get them here. So I really don't have a problem with that on Route 40. Thank you. Now we're <laughs> 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 here. Here it comes. Wasn't going to